Our Father, I, Lord, I thank you for the time of worship. Jesus, I lo- you do it every time, Lord. You have a theme for every time that we worship. And I think it was safe to say that the theme of worship this Saturday, today, this Shabbat is hallelujah. Praise to the Lord. Let Yahweh's name shine. Let Yeshua shine. Let the light of Jesus shine. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about Jesus. Now, Father, whatever you've given me is is enough. Jesus, your word is enough. Your grace is sufficient. Everything you've given for today is enough. Lord, now, what you do with the words that you've given, I pray that it go and that you would set a guard over it, to watch it, to water it, to bring it to pass. Oh God, inspire us anew. Stamp eternity on our eyeballs. Oh God, don't let us turn to worthless idols, to things that mean nothing, that literally burn in this realm, time, and space. Oh God, let us have eternity in view. In Jesus' name, amen. Go to Proverbs 17. Mike, would you read that? Proverbs 17, verse 24. That's on the next page. Wisdom is before him who has understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. Ramon, what version do you have? Uh, uh, Ramon, read yours. Wisdom is before the face of one who has understanding, but the eyes of a fool wander everywhere. Um, let's see. Um, okay, so um, Elijah, please read King James. It's right here. No, nope, right here. Okay. Wisdom is before him that hath understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. Yep. Uh, New American Standard. Wisdom is the presence of one who has understanding, but the eyes of a fool are on the ends of the earth. And, um... Jen, you said you have HCSB? Yeah. Nice and loud. Wisdom is the focus of the perspective, but a fool's eyes roam to the ends of the earth. Yeah, wisdom is the focus of the perceptive, but a fool's eyes roam to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord is this, that, guys, there is so much. And, and I'm, I'm guilty of... Looking to that with which will burn. Pastor Carter Conlon said that let's keep things in their proper perspective. Living here on this earth is um, it's like the living. It's like a we're on a journey on the Titanic, but you know what's going to happen. You hope you know what's going to happen. And we, as uh, Reinhard Bonnke said, a similar analogy is that in his full flame series he said uh, that the church are the people on a ship that know what's going to happen they know there's an emergency rest of the world don't even know there's an there, there's a problem and yet the um, Uh, sometimes, sadly, we live as if we have all the time in the world, and um, and it's an imperfect picture because we think in human terms. But the we want to rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic. We want security. We want stability. If we want acceptance, 
you know, if we want someone to look at us, look how, how, how I put the couch here by the window. Titan, you're still sinking. Well, I, I have like 10 chairs now in my cabin. Ship's still sinking. Well, I the water on my room. yeah, ship's still sinking. Um, fool's eyes roam to the ends of the earth. Um, Proverbs 1, and it starts like this. He gives a preface. Um, verse 7, which to preface everything for the whole book of Proverbs goes into verse 7. The fear of the Lord is is the beginning of knowledge. Uh, in chapter 9, Proverbs 9 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fools despise wisdom and discipline. Uh, wisdom is looking at Jesus. I've been going through Thomas a. Kempis, the imitation of Christ. And the the greatest blessing is seeing his wounds and seeing how much he suffered, how much he bled, how much he died, uh, you know, how, how bad he died, how he rose again. I mean, that, that, that resurrection is very important. Otherwise, everything he went through would have been a total loss. And we would be... We would be up a creek without a paddle. But no, he rose again. We, we sang the song, Hallelujah, What a Savior. And to see what he went through to get us. All of, all of hell can happen around us. And we would be caught up in that storm. We would be caught up in that filth. Guys, there's, there's, there's so much stuff out there now. And it's getting to the point, you can't believe anyone. You can't. You really cannot. It, you will get, it, it is like what um, Proverbs 23 says about the, the who has woe. Verse 29 who has sorrow, who has conflicts, who has complaints, who has wounds for no reason, who has red eyes. It's like you feel so tired. Those who linger over wine, those who go looking for mixed wine. Wine, in the scriptural context, was, was an object to make us feel like everything's okay. You look at Proverbs 31. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, to drink strong drink. Give it to those who are perishing, to those who are poor. It gives them the sense, everything's going to be just fine. It's not. Not in this earth. Not in this life. It's not going to be fine. It sounds almost depressing, guys. It's, it, it does. This is something the Lord has given me. It sounds really depressing. Oswald Chambers says, life is not just ho-hum or bad. No, life is tragic except for Jesus Christ. What we have now, there, there is absolutely, you know, I was really convicted. There's absolutely nothing out there that we could possibly want or look at that is worth stealing our heart and affection of the one who poured out his very life to those on the cross who were his enemies and said I love you it is not worth it there's nothing there's no security here there's no lasting treasure here it's not worth it things come and go the fool will look only to what's here and now you see it in the in the sphere that we're in now in the political realm guilty I, I got caught up in looking at 
news articles and, and be like, and, and, and find myself, oh no, I was like that man in the ship where he's like, what, what just happened? Who just beat me? I'll just go get another drink mm. or another news article. Or how about another, oh, I don't know, sermon. I mean, we can, even good things. What about what Brother Ravenhill said that I love him, that I adore him, that I worship him? When was the last time that we got into our closet, our, our, our prayer closet, prayer time, prayer room, what, where, where, wherever, where you got alone with God and you have a shouting and, and you, you just burst open? Where you burst open in front of him? Guys, if you can't be honest with one another, you ain't, you're, you're not going to be honest with God. Honesty involves brokenness. Because let's, let's face it, it's humiliating. Because that means you're going to be naked. That means every good, which the, in us there is nothing good, is being exposed. So someone can hurt us. If you are naked in the face of God, here and now, you are in the safest place because now he is, he, judgment of the flesh has happened now. It happened on the cross. It is and you bring it to Jesus says, I mean, if all you could say, Jesus, I love you. I love you. Thank you for dying for me. I love you, Jesus. If all you could say is Jesus until something happens in you. And I can't even express it, but just point to it. You know what it is. I mean, I'm not talking about some emotional. Ex no, there's something that happens where it's a part of you where you feel like, ah, and it happens. It's a breakthrough. And stinking, we don't have enough breakthrough in the church. And among believers, we don't. We don't get through. We don't say, oh God, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. We want to put in our 45 minutes and say, that's enough. And say, okay, well, I got stuff to do. I, I read my Bible. I, I wrote my journal, sang some songs or what, what not. How desperate are you? Are you willing to say, you know what? If someone's not, honey, you got to go to work. To say, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm calling the day off. I've got to get a hold of God. I've got to be desperate for him. Or otherwise I will die. And I don't care if I lose my job. How desperate is that? Is that your everyday waking moment? Your desperation? The fear of the Lord? Knowing that at a moment, you're going to be judged for every idle word. Every Filthy speech, gossip, and every inactivity where you could have done something. I'm not talking performance like if you don't do it, you're wrong. No. Where God gives a little prompt. I, I tell the kids there's a prohibitive level and then there is deluxe edition in the sense of there's uh, it's like a margin. You have this margin, uh, almost like a bell curve. Like you're not going to go this direction. Oh, this is like off limits, and this is ideal. Again, it's not performance, and and I don't know how else to express it, but try to give examples. Given a choice, would you rather? Oh, eh, I got, I got, I got other things to do. Or would you rather be transparent and say, you know what? I'd rather take, allow the emotional tearing. There are people who cut themselves, cause themselves to bleed because they don't want the, to experience the emotional pain. And because that, at that part, as Hebrews 4.12 says, the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing through the division of flesh and body. No, soul and and spirit it is by that point when when look god has to pierce through emotion to get to your spirit sometimes but you gotta let him let him break you let him read you let him bring you to the point of tears point of shouting where where you have to get where he brings these emotions and you're like i don't want to deal with this and god says no but i do because i know this will bring their wholeness Stop fighting me. The more you say, no, God, I'm not going to do this. He says, fine, because he will respect your will. But the more you say, okay, God, I'm all yours. Break me. He says, are you sure? Yes, I've got to have you. 
Okay. And he'll bring something up. A relationship with your father. Where he stole from you. Neglected you. Didn't give you what you wanted. Wasn't there for you. As a little girl, you just wanted to be with daddy. And he's like, he would rather do his own thing. And then he decides to leave your mom. Because he had something better to do. Or someone better to be with. Have you forgiven him for that? Have you allowed the Lord to say, I want to, I'm, I got unfinished business here. I want to heal you, but you're not letting me in. You're not letting me in. My daughter, my son. I want to deal with this. Stop running away. Stop it. And you say, I don't want to deal with this. Okay. It will be the death of you. But that's the old you that died on the cross. I stop fighting it. Let it happen. Let it happen. Because what happens on the other side is there's resurrection life. If, what was the song we sang? Christ uh, be magnified. If, if death brings resurrection. Then do it. It, thank you. Death is just a doorway to resurrection. I would rather face it than get stuck here. I want all that God has for me. My Bible says, John 10, 10. He says, Jesus says, I've come to give life and life more abundant. The, 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 the devil only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I don't want to be on that side. I don't want to look on the ends of the earth. Where emotions, I keep running into the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. Bitterness, unforgiveness. I don't want to keep going there. I want to be free. You promised me freedom. And he says, I did. You're not after it. And God says, I'm waiting on you. Okay, fine. I'm going to grab you by the legs and you take me. He says, well, we got, a, we got some work to do. And he starts bringing stuff up. Okay. Okay. That's your flesh getting destroyed. People cut themselves so that they don't have to deal with that emotional pain. Deal with it. Because my Bible, Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you're not going to die. But you will live. You, there is the illusion, the shadow of death. I will not fear. Because there is this thought, if I look at it, I'm going to die. I'm going to lose. I'm going to be lost. He's going to hate me. He's not going to love me. I'm going to... He's going to take from me again. This is, this is going to hurt. That's a big one when we deal with emotional pain. This is going to hurt. Then let it hurt. And if it kills you, you're with Jesus. So what difference does it make? Are your eyes on the ends of the earth? On how people deal with things? Or are your eyes in, on wisdom? Which is the fear of the Lord. I want to be holy, Jesus, as you are holy. Because with holiness, you stand, well, I mean, you stand with him regardless. But now you work with him. As a bride works with her husband. Taking captive. Kicking butt and taking names as we say. I know I'm talking to someone here. I, God's giving these words. Stop fighting. Stop looking to what is seen. Stop looking to your emotions. To your experiences. But look to the cross. Because he died. All the emotions. He was left alone. By his father. He was left alone. To suffer. He was neglected. He was whipped. His friends left him. I'm sure he felt. I'm not going to have anything. Even my clothes. Guys. Jesus was naked on the cross. Dignity. Dignity. Yeah, that went too. This is about your holiness is about his kingdom. I'm going to say something very, very hard. And this is of the Lord. If you don't want your holiness, may I remind you that you are not wanting his kingdom. Hebrews says, pursue peace with all men. That's one aspect. And holiness for that which no one may see the Lord. If you want the holiness of God in you. 
but you're not willing to go through the difficult things. The reminder is, Jesus says, fine, deliverance will come, like with Esther. But you will, not necessarily the big capital D, you will experience death in your life. You will not experience breakthrough. Don't you know it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom? If you would seek that which is above, wisdom and fear of the Lord, and hate those things that have brought emotional pain. Yes, they were horrible things. Horrible, horrible things. And Jesus died for that too. And if you take it in the, to the cross of Jesus and say, Okay, Jesus, I don't care what happens to me. I don't care how bad I feel. I don't care how many tears I've shed. But you're worth it. You're worth it. Take him by the take him by the heels. Don't give up. Father in heaven, I thank you for delivering the message about setting our face towards wisdom. Towards the cross. Because it does bring resurrection. We cannot get to resurrection unless we go through the cross first. Knowing that the cross is the doorway for the eternal life. The doorway for the new life. This is the only thing that matters, as Paul says in Galatians, a new creation. Oh God, let us let go of death. Let the dead bury their dead. So that we may have resurrection. Father, I pray for the current volatile... Uh, current events in our country I pray for our leaders I pray for our military oh God they are having to do very difficult things I pray that whatever it is that they will act in accordance with their conscience um, Father I, I, I pray that whatever glory will be revealed this week Father, that at the end, we will say yes and amen. For the Lord God, judge of all the earth, has done righteously. And worthy is the Lamb who takes away the sin of the earth, who judges rightly. Father in heaven, we need you. Sorry for our own sin. Oh God, we, we, have, we have spurned you. We have taken lightly the things of grace we have not considered things holy Jesus we need your Holy Spirit to equip us as your body being bold for your word for your truth To not be afraid, to not be ashamed of the gospel because the gospel is the power of God. Oh God, help us to spur us on, to, to, to spur one another on. Jesus, Amen, amen, amen. Uh, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Lord, just promise that your children, the ones who follow you, will be protected. Mm. Lord, we, we lay hold of that and we, and we uh, ask that we can extend it to this nation. All of the believers, all of those who are proclaim Yeshua as their Lord and Savior, that they, they can extend that grace and mercy. To the regions around them and and by proxy father you can you can spread your mercy across this land and increase the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of the saints to, to lead people out of the darkness to show to shine their lights to shine their christ lights at this time because the, the ugliness of the enemy is spreading Amen. Yes, Lord. the uh the hatred 
and the vitriol. You know it, Father. You know all these things. And they're even coming against your saints. And we ask that that mercy and grace that spreads across the land through your saints can permeate the darkness that the enemy is trying to hold veil over this land. Mm. We pray for our land, Father. Tear away the veil. Yes. Let your yes. light shine through, through Hallelujah, your saints. Jesus. Shine Amen. through, right through the skies and the heavens, Father, that you show yes. the people of this land how desperately we need you and to return to you. Mm. And that in the midst of all of this, there can be revival. That's Amen. what revival is, Father. We repent on behalf of this nation and mm. the sins that are plaguing this land and, and upon the the innocent blood that is mm. shed every day. Yes, Lord, forgive us, oh God. Forgive us, Father. Amen. Help us, Father. Help us to be the light. Help us mm. to change this land, to be your, your saints in this world, and that we can spread that abroad across the, across the globe, Father, because that's the purpose of this nation, standing for your glory and honor, mm. that we can bring it to, uh, across the globe, around to the areas where Christians are under heavy persecution and being slaughtered mm. for their faith, Father, that, that your hand is upon that now. We pray for the particularly the, the mm. people of Nigeria who are under yes. severe restraint from their government and, mm. and, and mostly the, the foul, ugly spirit of Islam, the mm. vile thing that would come against them and cause them destruction because there's a thirst for blood. Oh, Lord, God, help us, mercy. help us diminish that help us the light of christ to shine through mm. this darkness shine through the veils that are covering the eyes and and the selfishness and and the, the self-righteousness mm. that we all suffer father and particularly what's come on to our government now help us help us to shine your light on that give us the strength and encouragement to shine through this thing Amen. whatever your timing is Come, Lord Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus, you mountain of blood thirsty spirit. You mountain, I command you mountain that wants blood either in sport killing in this country or killing of innocent life. In Jesus' name, you are done. Get tossed into the sea. Don't come back in Jesus' name. You unbelief, you mountain of unbelief, get up, get tossed into the sea in Jesus' name. We have trusted in the Lord of hosts. We are human, but he is our salvation. He is our king. And we command you to go and be cast into the sea. Have no business among the believers, the church anymore. No more unbelief. No more wavering. No more... Uh, baloney no more excuses to follow the call of God no more in Jesus name that your bride would rise Lord Jesus you unbelief mountain you Jezebel spirit and mountain of manipulation and Jezebel get up and go in Jesus name and have no business in this country you fatherless Spirit and realm of the woman taking the reins and the father sit back zoning out on TV. I don't know what you are. You you you, you hill a difficulty and you mountain that that has not been moved. I declare you gone in Jesus' name. Get up and go into the sea. No more. Fathers, go back to your children. Children, go to your fathers in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, that you would raise people up, that there wouldn't be any more cowardice, but Lord, that you would put the spirit of courage mm. in the people, mm -hmm. that you would raise this nation again to be a beacon of light, a lighthouse to the nations, Hallelujah. to our brothers and sisters who are being slaughtered all around all around the, the world. Lord, that, you would, that we would be that extended end for them, that support, that um, safety safety net safety zone lord thank you lord for this nation here thank you lord for sending people out around the nations to 
share the good news lord i pray mm. that we would go back to sharing the good news that we would even be more intensive in sharing and lord i thank you that you are not finished with this nation we thank mm -hmm. you lord that you are still in control and that you still want to bless by this nation so i pray lord for people who will stand for righteousness who will stand for they, their faith that would stand what whatever the cost and lord that they would stand for their family they would stand for children that they were they would stand for righteousness they would stand for honesty for integrity mm. valor people of valor mm. like the people who founded this land founded this country people who were selfless generous that would that gave everything so we would have a future here I thank you, Lord, that you would put that same spirit so there would be a future Amen. for those who are saved in Jesus Christ. So there will be resident of mm. heaven. I thank you, Lord, that you want all your children to come in. All of your children. All of those who you know who are going to be coming. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Mm. The spirit of violence in this world today that the enemy has risen up with. Sister hating sister, brother hating brother. Families hating other family members. And divisions within cultures hating one another to the point of destruction. Father, we come against this in the name of Jesus. We ask for your merciful hand to touch, to start in our own lives, to touch us, our own brothers, our own sisters, our own fathers and mothers, our own children, and every every connection we have within our family, Father, let it be washed over by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And the forgiveness that comes. Through Christ Jesus, help us be the one to implement and others can see the light and follow. Give us the strength to strip away and, and humility to implement the love of Christ in all of us, Father. And not follow the hard line of, of self-want and, and self-righteousness. But your righteousness would reign true, Father. There's a curse upon the land and upon the world. It's a hatred, one man towards another. Your word said that the love of many would wax cold when we come against this now. We pray in the name of Jesus to melt that wax. To melt the wax of coldness. Cause us to, to, to love one another through the eyes of Christ. Even when we have differences, we can be different people but have one Lord, one Savior. Mountain of division, yes. enmity, brother against brother, father against son, and all those things. Father, you say in Proverbs 6, one of the things that are abomination to you is, is one who sows discord among brothers. In the name of Jesus, you mountain of difficulty of discord of unity of hatred of division division in in the human race division among people in the body of jesus you're the first to go you need to go in jesus name get up and go it should not even be named among christians that there's division god forbid the blood of jesus is not divided we are connected by the blood of jesus hallelujah and if we are if we are not connected by the blood of Jesus, and somebody is not in the blood of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would sift it and purify. That there would only be those who are held fast by your blood. By your water. By your word. In Jesus' name. 1 John 3, 7. Have thine own way, O Lord. Raise up a baptism of obedience in the body of Christ. No more excuses to pick up and move, to do 
what you tell us to do, to be faithful in the little, so we may be faithful with much. Father, forgive us for our complacency. Forgive us where we have not done as we ought. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry we've neglected even the little things. I'm sorry for myself. Jesus, we and our fathers have sinned. Where we have done things not uh, having any thought or consideration of accountability. Thinking we can, oh, we'll be let off the hook. Oh, it's, it's okay. God will forgive me. Father, may it never be. Lord, I pray that now we would hold ourselves accountable. Abba, as we near Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Day, that his legacy of peace and unity yes. among yes. Christ, among yes. humanity, yes. it's only by the blood of Jesus that we're united that that legacy would stand. All the infighting, the unforgiveness, the amount of unforgiveness in Jesus' name, I command you to go. Stupid grudges where we didn't get our way. That that would be gone in Jesus' name. You have no business among the body of Christ. It should not be named. Unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment should not even be even in the threshold of the exterior doorway of a Christian. God forbid. God forbid that that be there. That we may be the most gracious, forgiving, truthful people. Purge your church, O oh God. May there be a new horizon, a new era, a Pentecost without Pentecost, Pentecost. People who are simple people, simple, trusting people in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. God. Thank you, Lord. gives me songs for seasons and um, the season, the song that he gave me this past couple of weeks is Jesus cast a look on me it's a very old hymn um, written by John Berridge and uh, who was a contemporary of John Wesley um, back in the 1700s he was an Anglican pastor um, <clears throat> he went through a period of of sickness uh, where he was unable to preach or ride or anything and so um, for about six months he com he wrote hymns and it was a way of passing the time in some sort of profitable use so he wrote this um, what ended up becoming a hymnal called um, Science uh, Songs and this is the preface to that hymnal that he wrote, um, and I'll just read a, a little selection of it. Um, he modeled it after the Book of Psalms, um, which was earthy and full of prayer and praise and easy, free-throwing, flowing thoughts from the heart. It reflected our uh, walk through the world in an incredible honesty and humility, um, most of which are, are written by David, of course. So he tried to copy that in this, the hymns that he wrote. But he says this, um, My heart, I think, is to open to the embrace of everyone of the sex who truly loves and follows Jesus Christ. The whole household of faith are my brethren, and some care has been taken not to give any of them a needless offense. In matters which are not fundamental, let everyone see with his own eyes and judge for himself as God enables him. The hymns are upon a Catholic or unified singular plan. 
not intended to um, deprecate any sect of Christians, but to sink the creature to his real standard of worthlessness and helplessness, and to exalt the Savior in the hearts of his people, that they may trust him, love, and obey him. Man's emptiness and Christ's fullness are my general topics, but diversified in a variety of cases, and these topics are not suited to the relish of depraved nature, which loveth gilding and varnish to hide a base metal. The more we feel our own misery, the more we learn to value Jesus. And the more we know of him, the more we shall trust him. And the more we trust in him, the more we shall love and obey him. To know Jesus was the top of Paul's ambition and is the joy and crown of every believer. It is the pinnacle of human glory. And according to the Lord's own account, it is eternal life. Where human pageantry appears in any shape, Jesus Christ is veiled by it. And much of this is found among us. Human wealth, human grandeur, human literature, all naturally producing human loftiness, have almost buried Jesus in Great Britain. The power of godliness is gone, and the form is scampering after it. The head of the Christian body is dishonored and rejected, and the members can have no life apart from the head. These hymns are likely to please no one who is pleased with himself. They are designed to set a man at variance with himself and to show that his worst foes are lodged in his own breast. Nor, nor yet will they satisfy a Laodicean professor who is neither cold nor hot and seemeth to be rich but is poor, having a head full of knowledge and a heart full of mammon. Mm. Talking bravely of the doctrines of faith, but a stranger to holiness and the life of faith. My kindly readers must be such as feel that they have no spiritual supplies in themselves, nor ability to lay up stores for a future supply, and therefore live as daily pensioners on the Savior's bounty, having vital union with him by faith, producing conformity to him, and centering all their hopes in him whilst receiving all supplies from him. Do you wish to sing as the angels sing? Ask of God a heavenly mind. A harp must be tuned before it makes good music. And when the heart is put in tune, well warmed with the love of God, singing proves delightsome service and a heavenly feast. But genuine praise cannot be offered unto God while saucy merit roosts in men, who thanks another for only paying us what is our due. And if eternal life is not the gift of God, but wages due for service, no need to thank him for his heaven. Since merit has prevailed much among us, psalm singing is become a vulgar business in our churches. This tax of praise is collected chiefly from an organ or a solitary clerk or some bawling voices in a singing loft. The congregation may listen as they please or talk in whispers or take a gentle nap. By feeling ourselves monuments of mercy spared, fed, and redeemed by it, we learn to love and praise the author of such mercy. And he goes on to talk about how the Lord um, used his sickness to um, show him uh, true worship. Um, and that's basically the end of it. But I thought that it, it is a good word to us to focus on the greatness of God and the meanness of man. Father in heaven, I thank you for the opportunity of intercession Lord that is like such an awesome gift we don't deserve to be um, in the Old Testament the priests were the only ones who were able to make intercession for the whole nation once a year Lord what a privilege to be a part of the work where, where we simple people can do the heavenly work to intercede for the entire human race. What a privilege. I'm sorry we take it so lightly. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, oh God. I'm sorry we take it so lightly. May we know how to continue in this upward trend. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>